Hi and welcome to another shot in electronics. Today we're looking at this Helimon Titan Wi-Fi Smart Timer. Okay, it comes in a nice little box and normally it doesn't come in so many pieces. Yes, I did a take it apart because this thing was very difficult to get apart. It looks like it was glued or welded in addition to its clips. So I spent some time off camera taking it apart just so we can take a look at what it looks like inside. Basically, what is this? I'm sure you all recognize the ubiquitous Sonoff. This is basically a Sonoff that can clip onto a DIN rail. Comes with this in instruction sheet here. Gives you a QR code to download the app that's not in the Play Store. And it shows you, you can put inputs onto those two terminals. It's got a relay and everything like that. And you can set it as a timer and Wi-Fi control. And I think they also said it's compatible with home automation and... Uh, timer works with Amazon Alexa and Google Home, according to their, to their manual online. Okay, so let's take a look. I'm sure you've all seen inside the Sonoff. If not, check... Um, Superhouse, Jonathan Ox's channel, because he's done a lot with Sonoffs. Okay. Okay, so in your Sonoff smart relay or Wi Fi relay, you've got your normal chokes, your step down transformer there for the back converter. You've got a relay, a three color LED. You've got the memory chip. Don't know if you can see, but I've actually upgraded this memory chip. If you look on the back, We've got our ESP8266 microprocessor and Wi-Fi, and we've got some supporting circuits and things like that. So this is the Sonoff that you can get from AliExpress. Okay, now the inside of the Helimon Titans unit. So once again, we've got our ESP module. This time it's in a can. Can't see any writing on there. I'll see if I can see anything. Yeah, I can't see anything, any writing on that can. But it is just a ESP module in here on its own little board. Then you got a tricolor LED, a decoupling capacitor, and a nice big switch. And if we look, the switch. Looks like the switch is paralleled with these terminals over here. Okay, then you've got three wires that's coming through. You've got a positive, a negative, and a trigger for the relay. And here's your relay here. It is a HF115F-I relay, which is rated at 16 amps at 250 volts AC. Okay, so that's why this thing's got a rating of 16 amps, is because of the relay that it's got. If you look over here, we've got a nice switch mode uh, chip, switch mode IC to lower the voltage to about 12 volts. That's to control your relay basically, to power your relay. And there's the choke for that one. And then you've got another choke on this side here. If we look on the back, we've got a smaller switch mode supply that takes it down to 3.3 volts, I believe, to power the sun off. And then there's just a basic little transistor over there for the Sonoff to be able to trigger the relay. And that's basically all there is to these devices, these Sonoffs and these smart relays, is just pop an ESP module, like an ESP8266, some supporting circuitry, a button, a relay, your power supplies, and there you go. You've either got a Sonoff or you've got the Helmand Titan smart relay, because the rest is all done in software inside the ESP microprocessor. So now, I get to try to put this back together and see how that goes.
I nearly plugged the plug into the multi plug without connecting it to the timer first. That could have been a painful experience. Okay, so let's try and connect up live here. I mean, connect up live on camera, not the live wire. South Africa, blue is neutral, and brown is live on these quartz. Okay. Power. And we've got a red light. If I push the button, it works just like a son of local control. Okay, so let's try to follow the instructions now. Wi Fi Smart Timer. Download and install the app. Okay, I've downloaded and I've installed the app. Okay, the app is called Our Top Smarts. Okay, Our Top Smarts. Okay, it says, press and hold the button for five seconds until the LED, green LED light blinks fast. Three, four, five. After holding the switch for five seconds, if the LED light is red, press the switch again, and you'll see the green light blink. Two, three, four, five. Maybe we should turn it off. Okay, now we've got a first thing. Okay, I've already registered the count on the app. Indicate the light rapidly blinks, yes. Okay, I put in my Wi-Fi SSID, a password there, and I should have registered, registered this device. Oh, stop blinking, so let's try oh, connecting now. Okay, so it has added one device. Okay, so let's say done. Okay, now we can hopefully switch that off and on. Ah, oh, red. Timer is on, timer is off. Okay, so that's working through my Wi-Fi. From what I understand, it should work anywhere on the internet through their server or whatever. Let's try the left time. So zero. Is that minutes or seconds? Okay, let's say one. Okay, so now it's counting down. Off after 53 seconds. Something to see. Okay, so we should turn off after five more seconds. One. Up. Oh, timer's off. Okay, so let's go to timer. Add schedule. 19.55. Okay, we can say it only once. Let's hit save. And then it should switch on in less than a minute when it's 19.55. Okay, 19.55 and we have switched on. So let's try something here. Add schedule, okay. 19.58, we're gonna switch off, save. Okay, now I am going to switch off my Wi-Fi. Okay, now remember, we got no Wi-Fi connectivity to this now. And I've restarted the timer itself by unplugging it and plugging it in. So, we'll see if it's clever enough, if it's got some sort of RTC built in, but I didn't see an RTC battery. If the product is disconnected from the network, the timer remains all, retains all programs and works according to the set programs. Hopefully, with memory function, when the product is on in the closed state after power failure, then call the product contact still keep the closed state. So when power is restored, it'll like it did, it'll switch back on. Also can be controlled from terminal A1 and A2 and can share with 100 people on the app. 
1958 and it's still on so it looks like it doesn't have an ROTC in it maybe when it reconnects to the internet it will re-establish so let's try that now and I do have a connection to the internet but this thing obviously it missed its time period so it's going to wait until tomorrow or whatever so let's try again let's try something else here add schedule 2002 let's say we wanted to switch on let's say 2003 okay we're going to switch on save add schedule 2004 we're going to switch off save Okay, so now I have saved both those and I'm going to kill the network again. Okay, so if this isn't running an RTC, a real-time clock inside it, if it's not running a real-time clock, maybe they're using the internal oscillator to judge time when it doesn't have a connection to the NTP server. Okay, it's 20.03. It hasn't switched on yet. So to me, this could be a bit misleading, the statement here. If the product is disconnected from the network, the timer retains all programs and works according to the set programs. So it doesn't have any sort of retention or real-time clock that can keep it running without the network. It probably uses the network to get the time from a network time server or from the Helaman Titan servers or whatever for this unit. So that could be bad if you're using it in a home automation system, especially in South Africa where the internet goes down a lot, then basically your lights aren't going to switch on and things like that unless you use the local button. It's not going to follow its schedules and things like that. So to me it looks like this definitely doesn't have any backup, like a real-time clock or anything like that, to keep it running the schedules when it doesn't have a connection to the internet. Only when it has a connection to the internet does it keep a track of time or get the signal from the HT servers telling it when to activate. I'm going to try one more test. I want to see if it's communicating with what servers it's communicating with. So let's just wait for the internet to come back up. So now I'm going to do another test to see if this thing's association to a server on the internet. Okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to turn off my Wi-Fi. Okay, my Wi-Fi is off. This timer is still on. My Wi-Fi on my device, on my phone. So I'm going to go into the app now. Okay, the timer is off on the app. The timer is on. Okay, so this app is sending information out on the internet to the servers. And this obviously is connecting up to the same server. So this passes it to the server, the server passes it back. I really want to see what Because that's a lot it's not on the same network then it's a it's a bit sluggish and problematic because you see time is off I'm pushing it was working fine for a bit turned off yeah so when you got it on the local network it looks like it works immediately but when you're going through the app it looks like it's got a, or through their servers it looks like it's got a bit of a delay because now this is going through a 4G connection to the internet and then some other signals coming back to the Wi-Fi smart timer okay so this thing is connecting to the internet because you can control it remotely from another network so it is punching its way through the firewall or whatever 
make it a connection and so talking through some servers. I don't I haven't read anything about besides that thing that I saw on their sites about the integration with Alexa and things like that. There's nothing in this little documentation, nothing that I can see easily on the app. So that might still be a work in progress or just some obscure feature. And we saw that it doesn't work without the internet connection. It doesn't do it automatically what it's supposed to or what you programmed it to do. Okay, so this device, as you saw, is connecting to the internet, to some server on the internet. The app connects to the same server on the internet when it's not on the local network and then you send the signal, it goes to the server and then it comes to this. That leaves me with one concern. What happens if they stop maintaining that server? And you've bought 50 of these and you've got 50 of them in your house or in your holiday house or whatever. Then you've only got local control. You don't have control through the internet basically through a different network and that. So that could be problematic because you don't have any control over that server. They've got control over that server, whichever the server is, wherever it is. That's one downside that I see to it. Okay, so now what I've done is I've taken this uh, smart timer and I've put it onto the one side of my firewall that's logging all traffic going through there. It is a Mikrotik firewall. And if you look over here, this unit is connecting to 52.58.249.179, port 1883. Port 1883 is the MQTT messaging protocol port and that IP address is an Amazon Web Services hosted IP address. So they're running an MQTT server on Amazon Web Services and that's how the system is communicating online for the remote access and that. Possibly for the Alexa integration and things like that. Not too sure about that there. You'll also see over here 1.26 doing a broadcast to the network on port 6666. That's probably for local communication so that the app can control it when you've got no internet connection just locally on the network. Okay, so maybe the instructions here are saying that it remembers it. The product is connected from the network, the timer retains all programs set up by the mobile app. So could mean that if the app is disconnected it will still work as long as the Wi-Fi timer has got connection to Amazon Web Services for those MQTT messages. You can also find out about MQTT messaging and things like that from Jonathan Elks's Superhouse channel. So I hope that's been a bit more informative for you. hope you enjoyed this reverse teardown or reassembly and holding thumbs and hoping that it did work which it it is working, so that's uh, a big relief. So if you liked this and found it interesting, please give it a thumbs up. Also, if you can subscribe to my channel, click the little bell icon and then you'll be notified when we put up new videos.